Commitment one, to change ourselves at the pace, if not faster, that the world changes around us, around us, which is an openness to bold institutional change. This, every generation probably feels this, but it certainly seems that the pace of change is accelerating, whether it's environmental, political, uh, scientific, economic, social, and where this change seems to be happening fastest is in this region. Our CGR has changed dramatically since we were set up 50 years ago, to usher in the Green Revolution, where our focus was primarily on boosting the production and therefore volume of calorie, bulk calorie. Now the conversation is all about transforming food systems in a climate emergency. So it includes productivity, but it's way more, it's far more complex. To do this, we need to change ourselves institutionally um, in, 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 a, in a really major way um, if we're going to continue to have impact and meet that challenge. Right now, we're working on a bold set of ideas and an intense discussion um, among our system council, with our centres, with our partners, on what might be our next 10-year strategy. And that includes some ideas that all point towards one CGIR where we access one at the country level and at the international level. And behind a compelling and aligned mission, uh, a unified governance across, across the system of CGR centres, institutional convergence, more and better funding, we're aiming for a two billion organiza annual uh, organisation budget, and a new way of organising of organizing our research programmes. These changes, if they're agreed, and they'll be discussed in our November System Council will be the biggest change in CGR's history. <laughs> Commitment to, we commit to strengthen our response to the global climate emergency, particularly for smallholder partners in, in Africa. I don't need to again, thank you, thank you. I don't need to again describe how this is a... <laughs> We've all heard how so many times in this conference that this is a perfect storm for Africa with negative yield impacts um, on top of growing populations. Um, there's been a huge change in thinking, sure. even since I've been working on this subject for the last 15 years, where this is almost the dominant theme. Uh, it wasn't that way until quite recently. The challenge now is to turn this talk and these political statements into really concrete action, which is not so straightforward. It's not about me labeling what we do, it's about doing what we do quite differently. Being far more conscious of the agroecological systems, the landscapes, the water systems, and the hydrological systems, and the risk profiles of what we do. Um, and researching that and thinking about the impact pathways that are going to succeed to make a difference risk appetite is understandably so low. And there's many examples of where CGIR, by working across our centres and across disciplines, can really help you there, whether it's in livestock management, landscape, waterscape management, agroforestry, agronomy, genetic conservation, crop development, etc., etc. And I can give many examples, but I don't want to take up the time for that. This will be a major lift. We would hope that our 10-year strategy would put the climate emergency at the centre of, of our strategy as an anchor point for what we do. Um, and, and that would be a major lift for the CJI working with you. Commitment three is to ramping up our efforts on big data and digital technologies in Africa. Um, incredibly exciting um, what this could do and what it is doing. Um, it could at least in part make up for the loss of degraded extension services of the past and could be an incredibly enabling um, conduit for the kind of research and innovation that we produce with you. Um, but this knowledge will be wasted if it's in the hands of the few. Um, and it won't reach its true potential if it's too expensive, if it's not ex available to smallholders, if the data is inaccurate, if it doesn't get to remote areas, if people uh, being illiterate won't be able to access smartphone technology and there's a real risk which we heard this morning as well put in the ministerial round table of a proliferation of both aid funded and private developed apps um, for smallholder farmers and online tools which are, may, will be bewildering to uh, the smallholder farmers that we would expect to take this up. So there's some real work to do in coordination. Um, Digitization is transforming even now the way we are working in CJR with our partners as a science outreach and dissemination tool. 
we can support this effort on many fronts, um, making publicly and openly available the vast historical repository of data from CGIR going back many years and still being generated today. And we developed and have developed an online tool to make that available. Curating the world's gene banks is an incredible store of information being digitized in that space that will be a treasure for the future. And also working with national partners to pilot and introduce new digital tools. There's a huge list around just a few examples when I check with colleagues. I mean, just looking at drone thermal cameras in Zimbabwe characterizing 30,000 lots in a day rather than a week it would take manually. Climate advisory services in Senegal, Mo mobile pathogen diagnostic online tools for wheat rust in Ethiopia, artificial intelligence tools in East Africa for livestock management, climate information services with, with this Esoko uh, company in Ghana, public cloud partners, etc. etc. There's so many ways this is exciting, but we aim to do more and we hope that this will, like climate change as a um, as a, as, a, as, a, as a unifying thing, digitization could be a unifying tool for our future research strategy as a science outreach and dissemination tool. Fourthly, we commit to improving and modernizing the breeding programs. This is a, a proportion of what we do, it's certainly not all that CJR does. There's 20 crop and forage species. We released 417 improved varieties. Um, just last year, elite maize varieties, green super rice varieties, improved potato varieties, wheat and durum wheat varieties, better varieties of ground nut, sorghum, perm melon, by 45 varieties of bean and perm melon, wheat and raisin, maize. There are so many spaces in which seed quality can be improved. Um, and a lot of impacts in this space. It's not uh, not enough of these uh, varieties are getting into the hands of smallholder farmers, but a great deal are. Just on Nerica rice, um, that's helped lift eight million people out of poverty. Aflasafe, as a tool, is making the production of maize and brown nut with safe lact aflatoxin levels possible. Cassava varieties, we tracked some using fingerprint DNA, DNA fingerprinting. We found that two thirds of cassava growers in Nigeria were using improved varieties with much improved yields. And biofortification reached 4.5 million people just in 2018. With, uh, by, uh, reached um, uh, smallholder uh, uh, communities. But we can do way more. We need to modernize our breeding um, systems very substantially in partnership with NARS. And there's a, a launch yesterday of the Crop to End Hunger Initiative, which aims to do that better. Lastly, most importantly, we want to be a better partner with NARS, with governments, with the private sector. And that's one of the fundamental drivers behind the one CJR. It's quite hard to work with us if we are fragmented, including at the country level, but also at the international level. We're not driven by journal articles, we're driven by impacts. And the way we have impacts is not being a development agency ourselves and doing this stuff on the ground, it's working with partners. That's our business model, to develop innovation with partners and for others to, to deliver that on the ground, whether that's government, private sector, civil society, etc. Um, we don't exist in a, in, a, in a vacuum. That's the key message, and we recognize that. Even if we're a two billion a year organization, given the scale of the problem, we can't do this stuff ourselves. And, we are an international partnership, so it has to be with you. Um, there are many ways we can improve things. One is being one as a, a single CJR at the country level, where we have a country strategy developed in partnership with governments and national partners. So we truly internalize the national development agenda and how we can respond to those priorities. Another is an impact-based approach in the way we do business, a much clearer end-to-end -end product profiling development process that more clearly describes the product that the consumers demand, and which, for which demand can be created as we take products through that development stages with partners. And another is working with national partners. What's remarkable is a third of our peer-reviewed journal publications last year were done with African institutions, African NARS, of which 60 were with Ghana, Ghana NARS. 
So let me conclude. Uh, there was a great quote from the meeting yesterday. African agriculture doesn't need rocket science, but it needs science. It will need innovation and science. There's a lot of things on the shelf that we need to disseminate. There's a lot of new knowledge and information that needs to be created. Meeting SDG 2 targets in a climate and a growing climate emergency will be an even greater challenge than the original Green Revolution that CGIR helped lead half a century ago. This requires a reinvention of ourselves to work in a truly integrated way across disciplines, across CGIR, across the CGIR and with our partners. And that's why a forum like this, with its range and depth, depth of African-led partnerships, it is so essential. So I thank you for uh, being invited as a partner to this event and, and your engagement and attention. Thank you.